You know we could do this in a nanosecond, right? We could. I like how it doesn't even need to be said that it would be disrespectful. Hate is useless. I guess Diana hasn't heard of the Red Lantern Corps, hate, rage, whatever. In this context, it works. Don't at me. What could possibly go wrong? Hey, everybody, Sassy Helford's back. For once, I'm operating strictly on faith, not on reason. Almost like he learned his lesson from that time. He was responsible for Soup's death. Kinda. It's probably impossible to direct a Batman movie and not throw in a classic Batman shot, but this is truly a classic Batman shot. Getting a Trinity learning to fly a helicopter vibe here, and I'm not mad. You should get dressed. I don't think it can be overstated how important it was that they look cool. So many superheroes of the past made everyone look just embarrassing, but they genuinely look cool here. Even Aquaman. Even Aquaman. 2010 Lee wouldn't believe the words 2022 Lee is saying. Um. Okay. So Snyder apparently hasn't confirmed who this is. There are plenty of theories from Bizarro to Brainiac. Either way, creepy. Also really loving Junkie XL, aka Tom Holkenborg's synthy score that feels inspired by Zimmer's Man of Steel score. I'm sorry, what? A force majeure pregnancy test? I'm not sure that would fly in court. The Mariner himself. Not many of you watched that video, but those of you who did, did. I don't like to break this rule, but when I approach the speed of light, crazy things happen to time, but if I do it, I create massive electrical power. Nice nod to Flashpoint, and also whatever we're calling the Flash movie at this point. Flash? The Flash? The Flash. This is a bad idea. Solid way to up the stakes to have easily the coolest mofo there be all, uh, nah. Bro. Bruh. Yeah, let's get this movie. I mean, just the score alone would sell to the studio execs. Not to mention all the other stories in different timelines. I mean, I know I mentioned it in the last video, but for real, get it done. Let's get whatever happened to the Man of Tomorrow or Kingdom Come or Red Sun. Come on, tell me you don't want to see anarchist Batman fighting Stalinist Superman. I think it makes sense that his strides are so long. Going that fast, each stride is like what, 20 feet or something. I don't know, math and stuff. You get it. There's some true love she knows immediately. To be fair to Supes, they don't exactly land with, hey, we're your buddies energy. Something's wrong. He's scanning us. What? <laughs> oh, Barry, ever the naive optimist. And still Henry Cavill's workout routine. He's confused. He doesn't know who he is. Do any of us? Philosophy wins, posing life's toughest questions and offering no answers. As a younger brother, I've seen that look a few times. One snowball just a little too hard. It translates loosely as, well, I was just messing around before, but now it's on. Such a perfect picture of why Supes is so hard to write. Three out of the five current Justice League are giving it their all, and he holds them like children. Sure, sure, they're trying to restrain him, not kill him, but tell me it would look any different. <laughs> I don't care that I saw it in the other movie. It's still so awesome. Barry's disbelief. And that would have to be terrifying in a whole new way. Barry usually feels safe in his speed force quantum whatever, but having Supes enter it has to rattle you. Something tells me shooting at pissed off Superman wasn't part of the job description initially here. Hey, at least bats can pay for their treatment when the VA denies them. Oh snap! Is that what I said last time? It's probably what I said last time. Him casually stopping her power move really nails home what different tiers they're on. Extreme headbutting! New sport idea. This world needs you. And that's coming from Batman, the guy who has a contingency plan to kill literally every member of the Justice League. Seriously, look it up. And some true love returned. Lois being the one that pulls him out of his rage fits perfectly with the nightmare we get at the end. You can't kill Lois. The point works every time. The mother box. Where is it? My problem with this scene originally was that they immediately forgot about the mother box, and this doesn't really fix that, but at least someone was there to pick up the ball. Well, try to. And while I get why Whedon just jumped on past this entire scene, it was a huge mistake. Implement lockdown procedures. So it wasn't the full crazy lockdown. Is that because Steppy's a known entity? Bio-Red 5. The sensor is picking up a micro of a alien origin. I've already said this, but Snyder Cut sells Steppenwolf as a terrifying force that I never got from the other one. Brutal and also freaking Miles Dyson will never catch a break. Your father sacrificed himself to mark that box. But yeah, that's some serious self-sacrifice. You have a satellite? I have six. Man, if there was only something else you could do with that money. Oh well, more satellites. He spoke. Did I not before? No, it was a little less speaky speaky, more smashy smashy. Lame. Let the man expose his glorious chest hair to the sun. Oh gosh, yes. 
yes. Oh, Barry, so full of wonder and happiness. Hey everyone, this is Alfred. I work for him. Darn tootin'. It's badass, Alfred. Accurate. I don't know where we're gonna find the cops. Yeah, come to think of it, that messed up Robin costume in BVS hints that nobody besides these two have been in this cave for a while. Fighting the devil in his army. You know. Again, that's accurate. Steppy even has the horns, but how does Aquamoa make something so rough sound so cool? Is it just the low gravelly voice? Uh, let, me, let me try it. <clears throat> you better hold on tight, spider monkey. Huh, yeah, it kind of works. He's never fought us. Not us united. So just to be clear, the Justice League is going to unite to stream into the unity? Just, just checking. I have a second chance, Lo. I am not gonna waste it. Well, good, because she had a force majeure. Are you really you? I'm really me, Ma. Hugging. We're asking a kid who just lost his father to go up against the most powerful machines in the universe. It's not fair. Big ol' softy. It's like, it's like some genuine concern. It's good stuff. Hey, is that Bat's messed up armored suit from BVS? You gotta love that Alfred is with them here. The unofficial member of the Justice League, yet the one I care about the most? This is one of those times that the sound and imagery makes me wish I could have seen this one in theaters. But hey, what are you gonna do? Classy, sassy Alfred. He'll break through the Unity's defenses. Remind me, how's that again? Uh, with the power of love? You know it! Selene is a legend and a superhero in our own reality. Even Wade stands. Also Huey Lewis in the news. Yeah, I know some people didn't think the black suit, blue suit thing really mattered, and I guess it doesn't really, but it looks awesome! And isn't that why we're here? Hell yes. The MCU is... The Avengers theme is good, great even, but the DCEU has Soup's flight theme, Wonder Woman's battle theme, Batman's, I don't know, the Junkie XL one, and all three are leagues ahead of anything in the MCU, I said what I said. Badass good guys. Stick to the plan. That's why I brought you together. Not us, huh, Bruce? It's like you forgot they're all genius level intellects. Don't worry about me. Get to the unity. We know he's not gonna die, but he doesn't know that, so solid self-sacrifice. It really is kind of bonkers that essentially 99% of what we're seeing is complete CGI and it in no way hinders the action. This is awesome. I believe Batman is actually real and I love every minute of it. Gruesomely awesome? Grossom? Did I already say badass good guys? Lots of hero shots. You really are out of your mind. I mean, yeah. He's a wealthy kid who experienced trauma and dealt with it through violence, so yeah. This whole sequence is downright goofy and we don't care. Aquamoa forever. Parademon Strunk to Brain. Slow-mo double skewer. Triple kill. T-Rex in the DC. Oh, it's just Superman. Master Kent. <laughs> He's just a country boy. You can't call him master. Oh, wait. Shall we? Yes, we shall. You went there to protect them from me. And sadly, you could have. That's it's nice of him to say, actually. Compliments. Steppy's all right. <sighs> yep. 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 Uh-huh. Yep. She can do the clangy thing with her shield? Wonder Woman is literally the best. I mean, I know we all know that, but the Wonder Woman movie only came out five years ago. We had no idea. No clue how awesome Gal was going to be as Wonder Woman. It really could have been bad, like as bad as the second one. Not bad, but instead, she's awesome. Also, lasso teamwork. I can't maintain this! I love how awful this seems for Barry. That sounded weird. I just mean they portray him pushing his powers to the limit as being really, really awful to experience, and I love that. That still sounds bad. My kink is the flash and pain. Huh, then this is coming out right. Not impressed. Everyone in this movie is just so sassy. I know, I know. Overpowered. How do you not love it, though? Sometimes you need to see an OP dude mess up the guy that beat three Justice League members a few minutes ago. Dang, that's brutal. He doesn't even know if it'll grow back. Aw, our little speedy guy fighting through the pain like a real superhero. But take it back. This is brutal. Working through some stuff, Clark? Coming back to life must be tough. So stoked for this Granny Goodness cameo. I know it's just a moment, but this really is the golden age of comic book media, folks. Because I genuinely never thought that was a character we'd see in a live action movie. Healing yourself? Dope. Faster than light speed? Dope. This score? Dope. Whatever happens, I want you to know your kid was one of them, Dad. Heck yeah, self confidence. Love you, Barry. You go get him. Make your own future. 
Barry just casually repeating his father's life lessons while he resets time. And while I don't think his dad really meant it quite this literally, Barry really took the advice to heart. I want you to make your own future. You're living in the past. Make your own future. You know it's bad when Soups gets disintegrated. I'm not broken. Self-acceptance for the win. Who would've thought the Snyder Cut was gonna be the feel-good flick of the moment? Wait, those are mother boxes? Look, feel good is a nebulous concept. Superman! Has anyone ever called him that? I guess people do, but like, to his face? Ah, Cyborg ain't scared, he's earned it. <laughs> ha, thought you were gonna have one last stand. Nah. I love how he'd already been run through and was getting tossed back to Apocalypse, but Soups and Wonder Woman decided they needed that last little touch. You know he felt that. One last insult, or I guess that's injury. We will use the old ways. Ah yes, interstellar travel, the old ways. And again, Barry is stoked. The rest of these jabronis are trying to play it cool, but Barry gets it, you saved the world. Be stoked! I'm gonna need Cyborg to come fix a few mixtapes of mine. And for real, I love the arc of the relationship between Victor and his dad. I'll talk more about it in the conclusion, but the simple act of using his powers to hear not from his creator, but from his father one last time is seriously moving. Ryan Shore, director of nanotechnology. The Atom? This Snyderverse is going place. What's that? Mm-hmm. 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 Oh, well, that sucks. Big round table. Six chairs. But room for more. Bring back Ryan Reynolds' Green Lantern? Ryan? Ryan? No. Probably better that he doesn't show up. Taught him nothing he knows! Dad, yes! you're gonna get maced again. Jeez, that's bleak. I mean, it, it's a joke, but also it's not. Too bad you can't grow to a 30 foot tall blue nude god. Encouragement, I guess? Still, Barry's relationship with his dad was a little brushed over in the Whedon version, so it's nice to see it more fully hashed out here. How did you get the house back from the bank? I bought the bank. Hmm. Huh. Again, it just sucks that there aren't any causes he could put that money into, you know? Oh well, more banks. It's all fun and games until someone's girlfriend is standing too close to the street. Oh wow, sticking with the black suit, I dig it. Ah <laughs> <laughs> man, they got zucked. Look, I'm really not a Zack fanboy, but the suggestion of what this movie could be is better than lots of other movies, that's all I'm saying. Who have you ever loved? <laughs> what? Is what I said when I heard that laugh the first time because I'd both avoided trailers and also always pretty much liked Leto Joker. Also in Nightmare, Diana is dead and let's be honest, bare minimum there's a vibe. Isn't that right? Batman. And the man knows how to say Bat's name, you can't take that away. And he creates a perfect out of focus Joker impression. Also the Joker's truce card is floating in the wind while Soups holds Batman's cowl, let's say, during Cyborg's nightmare vision. But all you have to do is tear it half, and I'm happy to discuss with you in any way, like why you sent a boy wonder to do a man's job. Even without context, we know exactly who he's talking about. And I do love the image of his mouth. Must have prepared Jared Leto for Morbius. There's something even more disturbing about Soup's being evil in the OG suit. It's uh, messing with my childhood. Can I help you? Even a sassy bats. Man, the sass in this movie. Well, we can definitely use the help. Glad you're here. Ha! Talk about 180s. Hey! Alien? Cool, whatever, welcome to the team, it sucks here. Call me the Martian Manhunter. Snyderverse, ah, right, dang it. Yeah, I'll say. Before we get into it, let's talk about some fun details I didn't notice until after my part one was done and some that y'all pointed out in the comments of that video. Starting with that, the shockwave at the beginning of the movie is actually seen and heard in Batman v Superman. This moment where Desaad backs away and all the parademons start bowing because they can feel the dark side is coming before Steppenwolf does. Barry stands to the side of his own speed force to observe himself. There's also the you are not alone sign for suicide prevention, which was a nice touch from Snyder. A few of you pointed out that the human's hiding hole was actually the most successful and I guess you're not wrong. It's risky either way, I was just saying the cage felt like a good idea, guarded by a bunch of warriors, but you're all definitely correct that the human one was the last one to be taken, so that's something. And the last thing, there were also quite a few comments about my wording, saying that Zack rewrote stuff and it was just an order of operations thing for me. Whedon's came out five years ago, so it's weird to act like they were his rewrites, but I understand the complaint. Everything in this movie, with the exception of one or two scenes, was Snyder's original idea and plan. So, the hashtag release the Snyder Cut. Shang-Chi allowed Marvel to correct a few missteps from earlier Marvel movies, but with the Snyder Cut, DC did it within the movie they had already released. And if I'm being honest, it shouldn't have worked. At no point while watching Whedon's Justice League was I thinking, you know what this really needs? 
two more hours. But like we talked about in the main part of the video, it turns out more time with these characters and their stories can be a really great thing. The Marvel TV shows and now DC TV shows have shown us that. Snyder Cut further proves it. Especially when it comes to comic book stuff, we're used to things taking a while. Whedon's version of Justice League was flawed, but I found stuff to enjoy in it. That said, the Snyder Cut is just well, leagues better. And even if Justice wasn't complete trash, it really did feel like the final nail in the coffin for this DC universe. Man of Steel and BVS weren't hated, hated. I mean, BVS gave us sad fleck, but they came out right when Marvel was just crushing every property they touched. Inevitably, comparisons were going to be made. Then Suicide Squad came out, and while again I found a lot of fun in that movie, it's definitely got some issues. Really, Wonder Woman was the only huge hit DC had, and it's understandable why. But when Justice finally dropped, even outside all the drama surrounding the production, it was clear something just wasn't working. What's crazy is that basically every DCEU movie since Justice has been pretty well received. Aquaman has no business being as fun as it is, Shazam is a delight, Birds of Prey is fantastic, and the Suicide Squad is effectively flawless, fight me. Wonder Woman 84 is the only slight stumble, and honestly, it's most significant problem is that it was too long. Cut that 151 minute runtime down to a tight 90 and it could be an enjoyable 80s romp. And while there were tragic and outside factors to Snyder's version not being the original, I can't help but wonder if it had been released in 2017 how it might have positively affected the future DCEU. Then again, four hours is a big ask for a theater going experience. And the truth is that even if Snyder had stayed on, the studio would have forced his hand and we'd have another BVS Ultimate Edition situation so they could have more showings and we'd be talking about the four hour home release anyway. And while Snyder certainly has a vision, not everybody loves that vision. It's entirely possible that the only way this could have worked was as something released on a streaming service while everyone was stuck at home. I think a part of what we like about it may be that it's not Whedon's Justice League. Without it to compare to, maybe this final set piece is messy or blah, not thank god it's not bright red. But it doesn't really matter, because what we have with the Snyder Cut is the Justice League movie a lot of us wanted. I mean, you fans made it happen. Bravo. Even when I didn't think it was a possibility that anyone would take on tens of millions of dollars of reshoots and editing, y'all pushed hard and ended up getting us exactly what we were looking for. Throughout the film, Snyder's grim dark tone is felt. The same tone carried over from BBS. But the humorous moments still fit. Whedon's comedy style often clashes, making it seem like a movie with a serious tone can't be set in the same world as one with a sillier tone, but that's just not the case here. It's genuinely easy to believe that this is the same world as Peacemaker and Weasel, hashtag release the Weasel Cut. After all, the same world with a global pandemic and nonstop war also has Paul Rudd playing the Mac and Me clip for the 900th time, but this time on Conan's podcast and sitting Congress people whining about racist babies. Tragedy, heroics, violence, humor, absurdity. These are parts of real life. And honestly, Snyder blends it all in this movie exceptionally well. Steppenwolf was one of the big failures of Justice, and this time Steppy comes off as more relatable and threatening, like more resolute and not in a doofy way like before, but also somehow more pathetic? Not in a bad way, though. He simps hard for Darkseid. Like, Justice had the whole, oh, the fear, he's afraid, fear is the Steppy killer scene, which was so dang Whedon and pretty severely undermined Steppenwolf. But this time he just gets bested. It's a strange balance that Snyder pulled off. One of the biggest changes from the original film is more cyborg, and like I mentioned, an angrier cyborg. He has more agency and the film is better for it. Not only does it vastly affect the outcome of the film, but it also adds some needed depth. Again, four hours helps in that regard. And Victor is at the heart of one of the main themes, an obvious one just based on what the entire point of the movie is, bringing all the heroes together, but an important one nonetheless. Each member of the Justice League thinks they're happier in their isolation. Bruce is closed off after the loss of Robin, Diana is still mourning Steve Trevor and trying not to get involved with humans, Arthur hates pretty much anyone getting in his business as well as his birthright, Superman is... Well, death is pretty secluded, but Victor feels like he's no longer a part of humanity through no fault of his own, and he hates his father for that in the beginning. It isn't until the end that they all learn they're stronger and better off together, and Victor learns to actually appreciate the life he has now, even if it's not what he envisioned. I'm not broken. Barry is really the only one that wants friends from the beginning, and he gets his wish by the end. I need friends. Speaking of Barry, the other central theme I wanted to talk about was do-overs, righting wrongs, or second chances. Barry's might be obvious, but it's another strong message for each of them. The second most obvious is probably Victor, who gets a second life as something even better than he could have imagined. Bruce gets another chance after playing his part in the events that led to Soup's death. Diana's willingness to immediately join a team of heroes after abandoning humans is her do-over, and along with Barry's literal everything just failed and they all died second chance, he is working towards giving his father a new chance at freedom as well. I mean, heck, this movie is a literal do-over, a second chance to see these characters and the story the way it was intended. And all the newly added scenes are just plain cool, there's no way around it. I want to see more Nightmare stuff, I take an 8 episode miniseries of that any day of the week. If Marvel can do What If, DC can do Elseworlds or Tales from the Dark Multiverse. Let's, uh, let's get on it. Martian Manhunter story? Give it to me. 
And I know he was initially going to be a Green Lantern, apparently possibly even Reynolds Hal Jordan, but honestly, as a comic nerd, this was just as exciting, if not more. And then, of course, the Dark Side Apocalypse granny goodness moment, just fantastic. Some extra fun fan service in a movie made possible largely thanks to the fans. And I'm genuinely disappointed that DC canceled Ava DuVernay's New Gods because this is a world I want to spend more time in. The Snyder Cut closes out his trilogy that started with Man of Steel, the aftermath of which immediately led into BVS, the aftermath of which immediately led into Justice League, and in a literal sense, each showing scenes from the previous movie from a new perspective. I'd love to see more, I'll always be open to more, but if this is where it ends, I can't think of a better send off. Next week, oh man, I'm not even sure. There's a movie on the schedule, but I'm not sure if it's gonna happen next week, so let's just say, in the works. I agree.